Hey, welcome back. It's been a hot minute. July was a weird month, but I am here now to talk about some things. Uh, I did a short film with the, the San Diego 48-hour film festival, so that's going to be released soon. I think uh, I'll have a video up talking about the grade that I did for that. Uh, but today we're just talking about a short, quick short film. You can see the link up there um, that I did uh, in, in 24 hours. So not a 48-hour film, but uh, yeah, just playing around with a concept. But it was more or less to play with a new tool. And since this is, you know, uh, a new tool tip, tool tip day convo, we're going to dive right in and talk about the look for this short film that you uh, if you already clicked that link, you've watched it, and now you come back, and now you get to learn a little bit about the grade. Um, but yeah, at a baseline level, it's the guy having the the short film or the series of short films that I'm making are going to be following around the, the character having a mental breakdown regarding his uh, mirror image of himself. So kind of wanted a very cinematic kind of filmic look. You can kind of just see it. Yeah, it is me, okay? I get that. I'm filming me, doing me. But the whole idea was to play around with some new tools to make some new things. Um, but you can see here, I have a lot going on. This is actually the macro look level for this entire film. So this is actually, there's two versions. There's one version that is A, and there's one version that is B, depending on which side the camera of the mirror, which side of the mirror the camera is on uh, and there's one small change that most people won't know uh, but I do have uh, this up I don't have much going on I have a little bit of uh, a power window uh, effect going on but that's it and then uh, yeah but that's for just for this shot and then you know my base primary under under work uh, underwear work so we can take all this off we're gonna just kind of just turn stuff off and kind of just talk about, you know, what went into making this shot uh, when it comes to the color. Um, because if we turn things off, what you'll end up seeing is turn off the brain, turn off all these guys. And then we're going to go over here, turn off these guys. Ah, things are going crazy. So all we have is straight from, if we go back to the start of the tree, uh, we go from our camera uh, log state into DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, and then from there, it's gonna go through all this stuff to get to where we're going. Uh, so yeah, this was a decently composed shot. We're using uh, the DRT JP249 to get out. Uh, its input is right now in uh, 2499 log. But that's okay. Uh, 2499 log, from what I understand from the maker of this DRT, is very similar in terms of uh, DaVinci Wide Gamut. Uh, and DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, except it's log numbers. I don't know. There's math involved and smart things that beyond my pay grade. So when we talk about it, though, what were really talking about is the fact that I just lost my train of thought. Uh, so why we're there, what I started with when I went with this grade was I wanted a kind of a cinematic moody look. Uh, there's some things that you could just be just drop the film look creator from doing your resolve in there. There's a new tool that <clears throat> I wanted to use and I filmed this first scene of this short film specifically to use this new tool that I've been playing around with for a couple of weeks called a die simulator. And what that does is uh, if you look at, if you look up old film stocks and you read their charts, like if I remember I can put the chart here, but it is, it is looking at how light passes through the die layers of the film stock, how sensitive those die layers are, which is what, helps result in the image. And so there was, you can get uh, from GitHub, this die simulator. It's kind of designed to do that. And so when you start it up and we just turn on this, the die simulator, it's like, it, it's in negative. Like when you look at it, it's like, whoa, 
what's going on here? But it's doing, it's designed to do what, uh, so it's reading, so it's observing the red, blue, and green channels. Uh, and then it is from that, pushing it through the cyan, yellow, and magenta channels, and then reverting that all back around. And so it's looking at it at, from the perspective of being a camera negative. Now, there are people that probably know a lot more about what this is doing under the hood. I've just been playing around with it uh, and, and tweaking settings and things. And so this curve uh, is, I looked at the charting of uh, Kodak 5384 uh, as the film stock, and I drew based on picking a mean for the cyan based on where those fell on the chart and then uh, made adjustments to how the curve on the left side of that mean and then also the peaks all these things are set and I have a link to a folder that has my power grades that use this die simulator and the max value we're, we're all about even just under one and then they had their means, and I charted those, and then just kind of drew the curve based on how slanty, like if you look at, just say, push the yellow left standard around, see how it affects, it affects things. So we just undo that, put it back to where I had it, so I don't forget. Or the magenta, like see how it, it's affecting the white line, which is the silver halide, uh, or, you know, so just affecting how those things overlap, you can see that's going to have a big impact on my image because um, it's doing stuff. But we need to get it there. So we take it from our DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate State, which we put it in in the original, and we're just going to convert that to 2499 log DaVinci Intermediate Space, which is what we have our outgoing DRT into. We're going to then invert our colors and this is just using the invert tool from DaVinci, the library. Just go find invert and pull that in. Uh, and then I do a negative exposure offset. So all these are set to zero down here. And the goal is, uh, it, except for a gain, everything. So this is in, nope, this is in, yeah, this is just a stock corrector. I didn't make any changes. And I just want to and set the offset to zero. And you can see the impact that that has. It gives a lot of exposure back. So it balances something under the hood. I don't, I don't know how the math works. It just does. So then we have, yeah, this, the Dyson. That's what we came up with. This is what, you. Uh, if I go pull from my power grades, my Dyson, just to double check. Dysim, Eastman is, so this is the Eastman Kodak 5384, uh, Eastmanish. I say, because I kind of, you know, it's eyeballed, it's a guess. I pulled it in, make sure all that's the same, drop that on, so that's just pulling from my power grades. And we could turn off the Dysim density chart, and that's a decent image right there. So you can see, all we did was go, this is what we got from the camera, and this is how had those, the RGB values, been pushed through a film stock that had those sensitivity curves, what we should get reasonably. And you can see, like, yeah, if we go back in and mangle around with these, so just like we were saying, like, we just start seeing how the color is shifting. We're just affecting the left side. We can pop that up. You can see that better, but left magenta. You can see how we're pulling pulling some of that magenta out, we're pushing it around. So it's going from being warm, more cool and magenta -y. Like, that's a decent, that, is, that isn't too shabby. I kind of like that. So, I mean, I have the, I have a couple that I've picked that are based off of Kodak film stocks. Uh, there's some people that I know that did a good job of getting the numbers of what these curves should look like. And I made them into these, these uh, power grades that you can download in the description below. Uh, but yeah. Once you start with where you're at, uh, again, and just pop that back on. Once you start with, here's my East Mandish 5384, 
and you're like, it's a little too warm. Well, what? It's a little too warm. Well, let's pop up Scion Max Value. And what happens is our image is instantly getting cooler just by twe tweaking that ratio. And there, the funny thing is there are film stocks like that. Uh, the 2383, uh, if we just pull that one over and go bloop, 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 bloop. It has a high peak on the cyan and a low peaks that pulls down on the magenta. And you can totally tell it's a lot cooler of an image right out of the gate. So we're looking at, you know, let's go back to my 538 graph. Boop. A lot warmer. And this is actually closer to what I want for my image. So this is where my starting point is. Now, did a lot of work after that, obviously. Didn't just leave it at that. So uh, this is a contrast and and a couple things. So this is a plugin called Contour. It's not for sale yet, but when it is, I'm going to highly recommend you get it. But I just have a little bit of a contrast curve going on. Uh, we can see that. You can just kind of, you know, set a little bit, big, bring up the black point. You can just see, you know, kind of brings back a little contrast. Because where I film this, it's a very, the wall is the same color as the skin, but everything. Very flat. So we're just trying to bring some contrast back in, keep those warm tones, but drop some things out. Uh, and I, if the other thing affected is the saturation level. So how the sat curve functions uh, is its own little its own little guy here. Uh, so he has its own, he kind of comes in low and then pops up and then levels off around the same point as our white point. Uh, so if you look at those two curves, you can see that big effect of washing out, kind of bleaching out the highlights. Uh, so we just turn those curves off. We can see where we're going. Curve. Uh, then from there, we have uh, density. And the thing is, you can kind of pop. I wanted to bring in some of the colors, so I just used mono nodes density and I just brought down the house on the density on that popped it up a lot more than I normally would if I wasn't doing this method. But you can see it just kind of just shaped the shadows a lot more, concentrated the colors, uh, and had a lot more contrast. And I was shooting it with the goal of highlighting one half of my face and kind of going for that Rembrandt look. Uh, I was a little unhappy with saturation still, so I made a saturation tweak and just dropped it down ever so slightly. Hue did nothing, nothing to the hue. Uh, split, and this is for the short film. Very, very minute. This is still using contour, but it's in its own nude. Uh, and it is only in the highlights. And it's a magenta. Uh, and why is that? I don't know. I just, yeah. I, it looked good to me. And what I'm doing there is just kind of when it switches camera perspective. So when the camera jumps to the other side of the mirror and is talking, filming the other character who is in the mirror, uh, bloop, that's the only shift that color wise exists at this macro level. So warm in the highlights or magenta E in the highlights, cool in the low lights with nothing in between. So you can see that nice little flick of how things work. So that is one visual cue in that short film of which side of the mirror are you on? Uh, after that split curve, uh, bloop, 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 uh, adjustment, you know, I popped in scatter for a little diffusion. So it softens up those highlights and gives a little glow. Very slight halation. You can barely see it. It's just these, so sat scatter, it's own thing. And then Film grain on the back end. I'm pretty sure it is the 35 millimeter reversal black and white, but then I think I tweaked uh, the texture and the size a little bit. And that is the shot that this is the macro look that is on all of these shots. So as you click through and look at what we got going on, they're all the same. It is, it is that, that's the same flow. And we're coming through there. Underneath, we did have, you know, 
based on you know balancing these guys to that guy some shot level adjustments here so just uh, a little bit more oops here we go so uh, just a uh, pop in the, the highlights a little bit more color balance there was a slight tweak uh, to shape around we can see what that did uh, so that you know just darkened up the shadows a little bit more kind of cooled down like I felt like the wash of the warm from the look was a little strong saturation uh, was a little heavy and then just to frame it a little bit better uh, went with this power window which is just just to take down that side of the room and because visually you're looking at it as here's me I'm blocking the box so it's just kind of quick fading uh, the light from the window is falling off behind me and yeah just a quick little little power window just help just helped shape that shot a little bit more and that my friends is in 16 minutes the breakdown of the look for mirrors um, glad you could join and I hope this was fun if you have a chance I have some links to the Dysim emulation which I'll be honest I've played around and um, yeah I think it's a little bit if you're a person that likes control over what's going on uh, you're going to like that better than just film look creator that's my two cents. But anyways, hopefully you like this. Uh, like, subscribe, do all those other YouTube things. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you on the next video.